So you will have seen in the UK as a beekeeper the number of Asian hornet nests that are currently doing their best to establish in the UK. And you will also know that my great friend Griff Reeves from Gwynedd Griffith Honey has posted some videos of the visit he did and the Asian Hornet pictures he took and also some pictures of me doing interviews with him talking about the Jabber Prod traps that I use here as well as the Vita Farmer traps. So what I did was in this spring, I did a video of how to put the Jabber Prod traps together, but I didn't publish it at the time because I felt that there wasn't really many people who would want to see that in English. So I just kept it. But uh, I've got it out and now here's the video of how to put those traps together. Just by looking at the traps, you'll be able to see kind of how they work, how they work, how they fit together. Um, I didn't talk about the baits much in the traps in the assembly video, but you can look that up, but you can use anything you want. But obviously what we try and do is still the white wine, the beer, and the uh, black currant cordial is still a great attractant because don't forget if you're, if you're trapping anything in those jabber pod traps, all the Asian hornets get trapped and all the bycatch can get out on its own. Uh, and obviously you can buy the proprietary mix. There's several different mixes people are using that you'll probably hear about in time, the best baits to use. Some people say fish meal, some people say um, like meat and poultry. Personally, I don't find that works. And from all the evidence I've seen and heard, that generally works better on other types of hornets and not Vespa velutina, unfortunately. So, you have to experiment, but if you use the basic bait, the original attractant we used before, white wine, beer, and uh, black currant juice, as well as the Vita Pharma proprietary mix, that all works really well. And there's another bright red colored one that you can buy that people use for wasps, that works just as well. And when there's loads of them in late season, you can use apple cider vinegar. So anyway, you'll come across that if you get these traps and then you can put that into place. It's just a question of trial and error. But the great thing is you'll see from the bottom of these traps, you could put a, a selection of baits if you want, a selection of attractants, because there's enough room in the whole bottom tray. So anyway, I'll leave this with you. You can see the video and I hope you enjoy it and find it uh, interesting and constructive because I show you how we put it together. It's a little bit fiddly, but I'll explain that in the first part of the video. But it was just to say I'm releasing this now so that you can have a look when you decide what traps to get for next year. Or if you can get some this season, get them out there into October, November, because that's when the Queens are going to be being released. Speak to you soon. Bye for now. So this morning I'm going to talk to you and show you the new traps I bought to complement my existing traps for Asian Hornet. This week in the apiary I was cleaning out some dead outs yesterday and when I was going through a hive, a hive had been missed, the front door hadn't been snapped shut on it, a mouse had gone in over the winter and eaten a lot of the honey, a lot of the comb made it the typical mess you get when you get a mouse inside a beehive. Colony was a dead out, as I said, but following that, the last two weeks, a Asian hornet queen has gone in and made the first founding nest. It's an open cup, it's not even a sealed golf ball yet. So she's made that nest, starting to, you can see the first egg, I'll show you that right now. There's even an egg laid into that nest, it just shows you those queens are now on their own for four weeks before they even get the first uh, workers helping them raise a nest. So these are the Vita Pharma traps we use at the moment. I'm not getting anything from Vita Pharma. We use these because they work. It's a goblet, okay, that's pretty hard. It's a new design. We put the lid on like that and then it goes inside this holder. And if you put the two ends that way, I find that's the best way. So when you close this up, that the two holes are actually quite near the entrance way, just in there. So when the hornet lands on here, you'd have seen me talk about this before, it looks in, sees that and thinks, oh, is this light in here? And it goes into the trap, then falls into the syrup because it's attracted by 
the fact that it can rest and the smell of the sugars. So these traps work okay, but you see the limitations. They fill up quickly when you get high infestations like last year. I could leave this two days and it became useless because there were so many in the trap dead that they started to crawl out the top again. So I've looked all over and what I've come up with is these traps from Jab Prod. Now Jab Prod is a company that make these crate type traps, okay? So you have, uh, I always refer to this as like a lobster pot entrance way. So you have a front entrance here and another front entrance here. Basically, wherever you put these front or rear, some hornets can go into here, okay? They're attracted because you put your bait in the bottom of here and the bait can be comb, it could be protein later in the year. We'll talk about that another time, but basically I'm gonna be using ivy honey frames that I've got that I can cut up into squares and put a piece in there. And then on top of this goes the trap. The smell of the ivy honey still comes out. And on top of this goes another piece of wood. But for the moment, I'm just gonna use this other trap. So just assume that this is a piece of wood that's flat, okay? So basically you have a sealed box, the hornets can go in, but basically it's very difficult for them to get out. So they go in here and then when they come out, they fly around the inside here and they can't get out because of this really clever device on the end, which stops them getting out. Now bees, honeybees can come and go in this trap. And the fact that honeybees can come and go is actually quite a good thing because it means that they're not worried about getting stuck and that may even help attract some hornets in because they see the honeybees maybe on a bit of honey. There's the activity of bees foraging on honey, which may entice them in. The other thing to talk about is when hornets go in here, they fly out, they try and go behind this cage, they can't get through, but the honeybees can. And the fact that there's hornets in here already it will draw others in. And that actually works pretty well. So when you buy a kit, I'll show you the kit we get. I'm gonna make a couple of these up. All I've got to do is cut some more squares of wood. I've got a couple in the apries already. I took yesterday. Uh, I've been making these up. It's a little bit tiresome to, to make them up. It takes a bit of time, but it does work. And they're really good to have because the main beauty of these traps is they don't fill up. And they keep on working in the summer when all your other traps might be full or you can't get to them to change them. So I've got another, a box of two here. I've got a few more over here that I bought. Okay, they've got to be assembled as well. I'll open a box up and you can see what you get in the kit. And you can have some idea, then I'll show you how I put one together. So let's undo a brand new box. This is a kit of two in this particular box. I bought six boxes of these. Twelve kits all together, cost me about 500 euros, sorry, 600 euros. We'll take one out and I'll show you what we're going to do and how we're going to assemble it. So I have to say they are beautifully packed. Everything is inside, a complete set of instructions on how to put the, put the track together, what it looks like when it's done, how to configure all the parts inside, and how to trap everything, the tools you need, how to make up everything. To me, that side is absolutely fantastic. I'm pretty impressed with that. So let's just take out a kit. There's the tray that I showed you. Nothing to do with that tray, just stays the same. And inside, you've got your hides. Your, sorry, your traps, not hides. And get one out. I just want to get the one out, so I'll show you the one. Here we go. So that is one there. And I think underneath this, yes, we have the other pieces that come with this. I'll show you what they consist of. So you have, okay. So everything else is for that trap. So in this box, first of all, they mark out everything you need to cut out. So you cut with an angle grinder, or I've got a disc that does plastic. You cut these squares out. You cut the two end pieces out here. You drill the holes that they've marked for you from the inside. You can see where the holes are drilled in there. You assemble your doors, which are these parts. You assemble those, which is tricky. 
because there's a knack to it. And to be honest, I was ready to throw the whole thing out the window the other night, but that's just me because I was tired. Let's just have a look in here. So let's open this up. So in each pack, in each pack you get a complete kit for one whole hive, which is really good. I can't fault their labeling. So you get one door, that's four pieces. So you get, this is for one complete, as I say, one complete trap. I keep saying hive. So you get the two front doors and you get two pieces that are the smaller triangles and two pieces that are the larger triangles that make up the front door part. So you get all that with it and inside here somewhere, yep, there's a little square of plastic that goes over the end of the triangle, which is that square there. And on top of that goes the non-return cup, okay? Now that is the stroke of genius because long story short, it stops any chance of any hornets coming back out. When you see it through there, there's no way back out of that hole once they go down inside. It's very unlikely they'd find that one space to go out. So that is the kit. To assemble this, you need a hot glue gun, some kitchen paper or kitchen parchment. You need an angle grinder with a multi-purpose blade on, like a, like a craft blade, which will cut wood and, and plastic. You need a drill, approximately five mil in diameter, and you'll use one of these pieces of plastic after to smooth over the hot glue with some parchment between it. But long story short, it's pretty simple stuff. You just need a few basic tools to be able to put this together. Now I'm gonna show you how I put this together as well as I can. They say it takes an hour. I would argue it takes a bit longer than that. But um, we're gonna do one and I'll show you how I do it. So first of all, I'm gonna put these doors together. I have struggled in the past, but I think I've got the knack now. And it all comes down to underneath here. It's very difficult to show, but one side has a clip and the other side doesn't. And it's how you get those clips the right way around. So basically what you do is this, you put the two pieces in like that. And then you use your triangle bit with the same. Sometimes they're a bit loose. You hold them in while you get them in and you clip them together like that. So let's turn this side around, start this again. There you go. Let's get this one in and you'll see they do clip together pretty well. Just gotta be sure about that right. Because once you get the first couple in, then generally they do clip together pretty well. They're just a bit awkward, you need the knack to get used to clipping them in. Because actually, my eyesight isn't too bad, but to look at this is actually, it's almost difficult to focus on it. That's the first one in. Okay, let's work on the next one here. Okay, so we're ready. That's pretty solid. So now I've got the last section to put in here. They actually do make a really good solid trap. Doesn't matter which ones you use, as long as you get the angles right, that's the cup facing out there. Clip that in, forward. And there we go, that's the last one for this. Now we've got to get these in to clip in, which isn't easy but it's actually a quite a solid design once they're in. That one's in. So we have a ready-made trap entrance. It's pretty cool. And I'll just show you this end that we have two bits of plastic that go over the top that seal that in. And that's the width the Hornet can get through. So it reduces it down, which is quite good.
And I can't remember which way these go on, but we'll just work it out. There, right, well, that's it, okay. So there we have the end cap on, and then on top of that goes the directional plastic piece that really stops anything even going anywhere near. So that then fits on here and it's like a, a U-shaped piece and that goes on the end here like this. And basically when that is on, there's a pretty slim chance of anything flying out of that. So I'm pretty impressed with that. And I know this is the latest model out and I'm lucky that I bought them when I did because there's other models previous that were not equipped with the end part and you had to measure the gap and everything to make sure that you didn't make it too big or too small. And it, it basically, for me, makes this easy. So I'm gonna quickly make up the other one and then we're gonna cut, gonna cut holes in the box. I think with all these things, once you've actually finished putting them all together, <laughs> you will actually be quite good at it, but then you've finished making them. It's always the same. So let's put those to one side now. That is the traps ready and done. So inside we've got our grill that separates the bait from the capture chamber. So we'll leave that to one side as well. What we're gonna do first is we're going to cut out the holes in the bottom of this with my grinder. Straightforward grinder with a blade on that is for plastics and wood, although I'd probably only use it for plastics. You can use a Stanley knife to cut this out, but you have to score it. There's other things you can do to cut these out. Long story short, nothing I reckon is perfect. It is what it is kind of thing. So let's cut these out. I'm going to be wearing my U2 safety glasses, so Bono, watch this space. And excuse the noise, I'm not very good at this, I'm not very neat, it does the job though. It's not easy to get this perfect, but you will see. It would help if I plug in the grinder. I'm on a, um, I'm on a, a small set of plugs here, so what I have to do is add and remove plugs as and when, because I'm on the power from the house and it's a long lead, but it works. So as you can see, the box is all cut up, all really good. What you have to do now though, is you've got to go through this with a blade and slice off all the loose edges. It's no big deal, it all comes off really well because what happens as the grinder kind of grinds, it doesn't necessarily cut like a knife, it actually kind of melts the, the plastic as well. So you do get a bit of molten plastic flying around. So wear some goggles. Just, just in case. But also it means it will come off cleanly with a knife like that and it makes a nice finish. I'm trying to keep this side of the, the marker because I want this middle bit to be strong. 
but you need the maximum. It's, it's kind of the rock and the hard place scenario. If you cut it too small, you're not gonna get much diffusion of the bait that's in this tray coming up into the trap. But if you cut it too big, you're gonna weaken it. So you've gotta get, just stick to the size they say. And usually you're okay. If you need to use the grinder again, you can always touch up a bit here and there, obviously. But at the end of the day, this is just for a trap that's in an apiary. So no one's gonna really mind. Okay, so now what I do is I also use my hive tool is sometimes the, when the grinder's working, it throws up molten plastic that just sticks a little bit to the inside of the door, the inside. So you want to just make sure that you just knock all that off. So I'm just, you can see now the difference. I can rub my hands inside there now, all the edges are smooth. So, and I know that this bottom part, the edges are smooth. So a little bit I missed there. The whole idea is when I stick this to the base, like this, okay, it makes a really nice flat adherence. We're gonna drill the holes into this. So we can see where the holes they've marked out for me. And the same this side. So there's 16 holes to drill, very simple. Five mil drill. You can get them pretty precise. Drilling plastic's pretty easy. You can't really fix your plastic door entrances into this until you've got the base done. And I'll show you why. It's important you get these pretty accurate because otherwise your cable ties won't be easy to line up. But I can tell you now that you won't have a problem because once you push that plastic drill bit into the or the drill bit into the plastic, it holds its place anyway. So that is done. And I go over it again, just removing any surplus from the drill because I want it to be flat on the edges. And also it helps your cable ties go through the holes better. Because if you don't remove any bits when you try and push the cable ties through, sometimes a little bit of plastic may just stick up and stop you pushing the cable ties through. This side. So this is the last of the hole drilling. The, the box is now ready, prepared to take the mesh and also the door entrances. So the hot glue gun has warmed up. Now we're gonna stick this grill, plastic grill, mesh into the bottom of the front, into the bottom of here. But what we do is we do half at a time. The problem is otherwise what happens is the hot glue gun glue solidifies too quick and you can't push this into it. So we do half one side and half the other. So 
I've got enough glue for this half. I'll kind of show you how we do it. We'll just go along the back here. A good depth of glue, because the depth of glue makes it actually stay a bit warmer for a bit longer. Okay, with the tissue, quickly press it into place. Don't want to leave it too long, we're okay. Still nice and runny. Now put your paper on. And what you do is you can use a bit of plastic that I saved, a nice clean piece I had put aside. I'll just use this for now. And you push it down. And that pushes the glue through the mesh and glues it to the inside. I can show you this now. You can see the glue has come through and secured it well to the base. Not brilliant that side. Maybe I'll do a better job on the other side. I find my bit of plastic. Into the paper. So that's much better that side. But anyway, it's all stuck down fine. The grill is now stuck down. You can use neoprene glue, you can use other things, but it's just as easy to use a hot glue gun. So that's okay. So now I've got the base finished. That will allow the odor of the bait to come through that grill. Now we're gonna stick in these. So we've got our cable ties. We need four for each one. One, two, three, four. And what I do is I like to cable tie these in from the inside and they they don't go on the outside they go on the inside like that so you I tend to I prefer so these have got little holes here they may which are really nicely done you can just see that goes through there each one is positioned it's idiot proof kind of thing even I can work this out so you push that through there back through this way. And what I tend to do as well is put them all in, click them all, do them up a little bit, but not do them tight. And I do them tight with my pliers and clippers afterwards. And I make sure that I've got the trap in position with the entrance into the trap facing downwards. So it's the same on both sides. Same thing again. Cable ties can't be turned once you push them through, so you have to make sure you get them right around. So you can see there now, it's tied into place. That's what it will look like from the front when it's finished. I'm just gonna use my pliers to tighten those down and clip off the excess. So some nice little pliers like that, easy to find, perfect for this type of job. Clip them off. Okay, that is one side secured in. Looks pretty good, even for me. So now we're gonna do the other side, look them up. Just something else to try, the beauty of these traps compared to the Vespa catch ones that I know a lot of you are using is when you have a bad year in France, these traps fill up really quickly. So I'm not knocking these, they work really well for me, no matter what type of juice you put in, they seem to work pretty well. But these will keep on working when the other ones are full, 
In the summer we've just had, after two days, these no longer worked because they were full of hornets. These will just keep on working. So I've had to buy more of these this year, and also I bought 12 of these to go in my apiary, so roughly 12 apiaries, depending on how many bees I've got. Maybe you might like to look at it, just to give you some idea of what we're trying in France. These have been around for a few years now. Dennis Raffray is the owner of Jabprod. He's also a professional beekeeper, and he's come up with this trap, this system that seems to work pretty well. The biggest thing of all for me is, as I said before, this will keep on working when the other ones are full and means I, at least I know in my apiaries I've got some other way of controlling hornets when these might not be working. Anyway, catch you again soon. Bye for now.